York politicians are calling what's unfolding on this 400-acre island a humanitarian crisis. So far, this year alone, 11 people have died on Rikers Island. If you don't know, it is a city jail located in New York City. By the way, five of those deaths were suicide. In fact, last month, an assemblywoman touring the jail with other elected officials witnessed a man trying to hang himself with a bed sheet. Moreover, according to NBC New York, a report released last week showed a sharp spike in rates of violence, injuries to inmates, and attacks on staff compared with previous years. This all prompting members of New York's congressional delegation to call for its immediate closure. So joining us now for some more context on this is Kay Ingram. She's a reporter for NBC New York. Welcome to the show. Kay, always, have a, always a pleasure to have you on. So, you know, this is just one incident that I mentioned there, um, but I, I was reading about another inmate stealing a bus who was handcuffed and crashing that bus. I mean, there's a lot going on. What's, what's causing the facility to spiral downward like this? Yeah, and thanks, Nick, for having me back. It's always good to be on. You know, first, I have to say, this crisis that we're talking about at Rikers Island, I'm actually steps away from the bridge headed to Rikers Island um, here in Queens. But this crisis that we're talking about is one that has been decades in the making. And so advocates for prisoners, folks who have been on the front lines of making sure that, you know, conditions inside of Rikers Island you know, they'll tell you that they have been advocating about these issues for years. And so really, if you talk about this downward spiral, really the pandemic is the answer to that as far as, you know, what was the straw that typically broke the camel's back. You can see behind me, right, here are some correction buses making their way there. It's a bit noisy. Earlier today, there were two counter protests happening, right, um, just on the heels of the height of some of that chaos you were talking about. Um, and so really that's kind of what it's been like since the start of the pandemic, something that my colleagues at WNBC have been reporting on um, since the beginning of it. And so, you know, a lot of it has to do with staff shortages. Um, we know that because of the pandemic, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of correction officers have been out on sick leave, right? And so how do you do a job if you don't have folks there to do it? And so that has caused, you know, a lot of the prisoners themselves to have to, you know, figure out what to do. Um, and to some degree, you know, we've heard about them working some of these hours, but then the correction officers themselves working anywhere from double to triple to even quadruple shifts. And so when you have these shortages and you have folks um, who are not able to show up to work, it leaves a place like Rikers Island a mess. And so that's a lot of what we've been hearing. And just as you mentioned, there have been more than a dozen deaths um, as a result of some of this chaos as folks try to figure out, you know, placement, try to help get some of these prisoners um, to find a different place to be uh, because of overpopulation. Another issue that's, you know, been uh, around here at Rikers Island for, as I mentioned, decades. Um, so figuring out how to, to amend some of these issues that have been building up for decades. Mm, so overcrowding. Uh, yep. systemic neglect. I mean, I guess things that are not unique only to Rikers Island, unfortunately, that's a big problem throughout our nation. But you add the pandemic in, right. that's only going to complicate things and make it worse. So, you know, we're not calling right. this a maximum security prison, though. Um, it is a city jail. So I'm just wondering, like, give our viewers a sense, like, what kind of things are people being sent to Rikers mm -hmm. Island for? Like, what are the inmates in for? Yeah, yeah. So Rikers, Rikers Island, excuse me, is actually just a holding place um, for folks, you know, and then they get sent elsewhere, right? They'll go to a state prison. But again, just as you mentioned, with overpopulation, um, it's just inundated with folks who are waiting um, to be transferred or who are on parole, um, figuring out, you know, what those next steps are. But again, you know, as our governor has mentioned, our mayor has mentioned, advocates mentioned, it's too long and it's too many. And... Um Okay, I, I believe there's somebody there with you that, that, that you'd like to talk to. Is that right? Yes, you are absolutely right. So I actually showed up here um, not too long ago. I mentioned it's kind of a busy traffic area right here, but there was a bit of counter protesting. You know, as you mentioned, Nick, um, there have been some incidents here at Rikers Island. So we've got two counter protests. I understand one was part of the union, um, you know, on the side of the correction officers. The other are folks who, um, of course, are helping to advocate for the prisoners inside. And when I walked up, um, this one gentleman who mentioned to me that he had been um, in prison not too long ago had actually caught COVID while he was in prison and he's out now. And he is, you know, here wanting to advocate on behalf of prisoners 
Um, and I want to be able to give you all a second to hear from him. You know, oftentimes when I'm on the show, I'm letting you know what's going on around me. But I think with something, a matter as serious as this, it's best to hear it from people who have experienced it themselves. So I'm here with Jermaine Archer now, right in his group behind us, right? Center for Equity and Health and Justice. And um, I'm not going to speak for them. If they want to speak, you want to know more about them. We have someone willing to speak. But we out here because the parole people thought they were going to have a rally to repeal less is more. Less is more is just about not sending people back to prison for technical violations, not new crimes. And they're thinking about job security. So they thought they were going to have a rally. And they didn't think we would know about it. And we found out about it. And we out here. And this is Cattell. This is... Oh, you have a question. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, you you brought up exactly that. I was telling Nick here how there was that bit of counter-protesting happening. Um, But you had mentioned you were in jail yourself and you had caught COVID. Talk to me about some of those conditions and what it is that you're, you know, rallying for for others. I'm rallying for others. When I, when I contracted COVID inside, they had no treatment. They didn't know what to do with us. So what they did was they put me in a box. They, they, they would put people in solitary confinement with no treatment, no water, no anything. And if you're not equipped with the resources to at least keep us safe, especially in a place like Rikers Island where it's close contact every day, then I don't think people that are in prison for technical offenses should be in prison. They, they have no answer for COVID in a close quarters confined area. So to me, until they can come up with something for that, we have to come up with something better. If that makes sense. Right. Well, thank you so much, Jermaine. And I know we're going to continue the conversation. We have some folks. Here are some more members, right? And we're going to make sure we get some more of that as soon as we get off live. But first, guys, I just want to mention, you know, Nick, there are conversations about um, calls to have Rikers Island closed down, right? We know that um, the plan was to have it closed down in 2026 then now delayed to 2027. But again, you're going to see advocates like Jermaine and his colleagues out here who are making sure that in the meantime, prisoners, those inside, those who are dealing with reentry, get the resources that they need. Thank you. Nick? Thank you to Jermaine. Thank you to everybody out there. And thank you to Kay. Thank you to you, Kay, for uh, giving us an idea of what's going on over there, giving us some more insight. We'll be right back after the break, guys. So we've been reporting on this a lot. You've likely heard about the jail staffing crisis on Rikers Island. Tonight, the I-team is taking us behind bars to show us the consequences. Exclusive video showing an overwhelmed corrections officer helpless to stop a vicious attack, a gang attack. As Chris Glorioso reports, she waited for minutes with no backup while a detainee was bloodied and blinded. You are looking at exclusive video of a 2018 gang assault in the showers at a Rikers Island women's jail. The corrections officer trying to break it up is outnumbered by herself with chemical spray malfunctioning. Four inmates jumped me. They kicked me. I was on the floor. Victoria Nazarova is the detainee being beaten, kicked, and dragged on the floor. Based on this video, she sued, and last month the city settled for $325,000. The corrections department admitted no wrongdoing, but the video shows an emergency response team arriving too late, only after Nazarova was bleeding and partially blinded on the jail floor. Was there any way that one corrections officer was going to stop that situation? I don't think so. Nazarova blames her injuries on understaffing at Rikers Island, and she says during the pandemic, staffing conditions have gotten even worse. According to Corrections Brass, on one day in mid-August, nearly 1,800 of the more than 8,300 officers were no-shows. That's 20% of all the officers assigned to Rikers. We have 2,795 times in the month of August People didn't call and didn't come to work. COs are allowed to take nearly unlimited sick days, but the president of the union representing jail captains said sick leave is not being abused. He blames new policies that limit solitary confinement and the use of force against violent inmates. You could be fighting for 10, 15 minutes before help comes because they don't have the staff. This is my opinion, but you have officers that just are fed up and are afraid to come to work. In response to questions about jail staffing, the city's corrections commissioner sent the I-team a statement touting tough new penalties for no-show COs. Efforts to end the staffing crisis are working, he said. Our population is dropping, officers are coming back to posts, and triple shifts are dramatically decreasing. Still, Rikers detainee Anthony Mateo told us 
he continues to see burned out officers. They look exhausted, you know, like they were running on fumes. How do we encourage more corrections officers to come to work? The ones that you do see every day, those are the ones that are tough. The ones that are folding and quitting, those are weak. They, they can't survive in here. It's pretty evident that those conditions are unsafe and borderline inhumane. Paul Prestia represents Mateo, Nazarova, and other Rikers detainees. He describes a dangerous cycle of sick calls when COs call out, inmates miss recreation time, and even court dates. And then they become agitated and more likely to fight. The fundamental problem is you have people in jail who are presumed innocent, who are not getting a day in court. Who, how can he get justice that way, Chris? He can't. What do you think about such a large number of corrections officers not showing up to work? They're scared. They're scared? Of course. You know that some people are going to hear that and they're going to say, but they signed up for that job. It is a dangerous job, but we need them to do it. In uh, Rikers, we have uh, some joke. Uh, it's not Department of Correction, it's Department of Confusion. Victoria Nazarova is awaiting trial on an attempted murder charge. Anthony Mateo awaiting trial on burglary and robbery charges. Both have pleaded not guilty, and both say they don't blame COs for not showing up to work because Rikers has gotten so dangerous. Reporting from the newsroom, Chris Glorioso, News 4 New York. You hit it yet? Yeah, number one show, hit those buttons. You ain't hit it yet? Yeah, subscribe.